All right, welcome to another episode of the Go With John Show. We're here today with Jerry Berry. Welcome, Jerry. How you doing, John? Good, good. So we're going to talk about um, construction financing, which we, we've talked about before. Right. But I think I think today we want to try to get into like some 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 details. So before we get into the details, sure. what is a construction loan and how does it work? What's the thirty thousand foot view of that? So we're going to set up a big construction loan for you. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't owe anything on that construction loan until you start using it, kind of like a home equity line of credit. So we're going to set up a, a big construction line, say it's for five, six hundred thousand dollars, whatever it's going to take to to complete your project. Right. And as the builder does work, we're going to release funds to the builder. Right. The, we can actually payments. give it to you. Draw payments. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. We can actually give it to you, and you can you can be in charge of that also. Right. But as a rule of thumb, there'll be draws. And, and you start paying interest on that money as you use that money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Big and then what, what happens? So, so you take out a line of credit. Uh-huh. And how does the interest rate work on that line of credit generally? Well, as a rule of thumb, mm-hmm. most all the construction loans that, that I do, it's, it's available two ways. We, we like to do what's called a one-time close. Right. So we're going to lock your interest rate up front. Like today, the 15-year fixed is at, is at 3%, the 15-1 the arm, which is a 30-year amortized loan. Right. Uh, uh, but it's only fixed for f- the first 15. Right. And we're, which February, is yeah. we're February of 2022 right now. Right, right, right. And it's at three, it's at three and a quarter right. right now. So that's actually the interest rate during the whole period of the loan, whether it's 15 years, uh, um, whether it's a 15-year fixed or the 15-1 for the first 15 years. Right. That's the interest rate the whole time. Even during the construction phase, the, the interest rate's only three and a quarter today wow. on that on that 15-1. So it's a great loan. You can lock that up front so we don't have to worry about where rates are when your project's finished. Right. You can do another loan to where we don't do a fixed rate product. We just do a big home equity line of credit for lack of a, a more understandable sure. term. And that rate fluctuates during the building process. Right. Still works the same. And then once the home gets completed, you could lock into a rate at that time but you know especially with the market today i'm I'm much more comfortable putting in putting you into a product that's fixed for 15 years absolutely not having to worry about it i mean we all know rates go up and down and they're on a little uptrend right now but they're gonna they're gonna come down good uh, for 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 a lot of different reasons we probably have another 18 months of rates increasing a little bit Mm -hmm. but after that they'll they'll slide back down good Good, good, good. So that's concerned. good. That's good to yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but you said you said the term draw. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you said the term draw. So, so every time you, or all the builders are going are going to arrange a draw schedule that yes. that they choose to work with. Right. Some of them are six draws. Some of them are seven draws. They could be they could be more draws depending mm-hmm. on the on the cost of the project. As that builder completes steps in the project, mm-hmm. just think of there's 100% till the project's done, right? So yeah. they'll say every 15%, the builder will say, hey, I've done this, 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 this. I'm ready for my first draw. Right. So we send out a home inspector, excuse me, an appraiser at the yeah. time. Yeah. And he goes out and sees what, in fact, the builder has done. Right. So we're not just going to give the builder $500,000 and say, hey, please please build John Jurgerson a house. Right. We're going to make this builder build John Jurgerson a house because we're only going to pay him for work he's done. Right. We're right. not going to give him all his money until the home's 100% complete, John's happy, and yep. you have your residential use permit. Yeah, exactly. So, so we, so we, you know, Stanley Martin Custom Homes, sure. we have the draw schedule right, right on the price matrix. So Perfect. everybody gets that right up front. And I think we get the first, we get a deposit, obviously. Then right. the first draw we get when the permit's issued. Right. Then when the footers are poured, then, right, there's very, Stages. various stages and it's just right. laid out right on right. the price matrix so it's easy to understand exactly and we'll fund we'll fund 10 percent of the line up front to get builders started right so we take seven yeah there yeah we, we get seven up front exactly so. right so I, I think a lot, one of the questions that that comes up a lot is there's there's kind of a ballet dance right at the beginning of the loan mm-hmm. and at the end of the loan when you apply and uh-huh. you get loan approval uh-huh. The question always is, when do you close and how w- w- what things need to happen? and What things do you consider with that closing date? It depends a lot on the builder you're working with. Like, I, I really like working with Stanley Martin Homes, not because you're having me on, but because you guys can get me plans and specs so I can order an appraisal and determine what that future value va- future value of the project is right, right. away. Yep. Before I can close a loan, fund a loan. I have to have an appraisal done. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that happens is is the 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 client meets with the builder. They 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 get plans and specs together. Once they've got their plans and specs together mm-hmm. and their bill of materials, 
I can order an appraisal. I'm going to make sure that I only lend, worst case scenario, 80% of the value of the property right. or 80% of the cost to build the property, whichever is lower. Right. Um, so before anything can happen, before we're actually going to send you to closing on your loan, we're going to make sure that we have the plans and specs in place, mm -hmm. the bill of materials, and that we're going to have a valid appraisal. On the one-time close scenario, there is only one appraisal. It's done up front. Right. And we don't have to worry about, since we've already closed the loan for 15 right. years, we don't have to worry about what the future value of the loan is. We're only concerned about what that what that appraiser says the value of the home is mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot easier for the client. On a two-time close, like we talked about briefly a minute ago, You'd have an appraisal up front that I lend on, and yep. then there'd be another appraisal that I would need to be able to sell that loan on the open market later on once a home is done. Right. So the one-time close really simplifies it a, Absolutely. A, a lot, and it's a lot easier for the client, a lot easier to understand. And it takes a lot of the risk out. It takes all of it for The me. interest rate increasing risk comes off the table. Interest rate uh, increasing risk and, and uh, in interest rate risk, and also value risk, mm -hmm. because values do tend to go up and down a little bit. Right. I can't imagine them going down with all the de with all the demand there is right now, but yeah. there is that there is that risk. You build a house, and today it's worth $2 million. Next Next year, it's only worth 1.9, right. which could affect your ability to, to lend. You're not going to see a lot of yeah. it, but it, it, makes, it takes all the risk off the table for us and all the risk off the table for the client. So yeah. that's the way I, I prefer to do them. We'll do it the other way if they really want it, but... Yeah, that's the best way as far as so I'm so so you have the uh, so so you get the contract, you uh -huh. have the plans and specs, you send it out for an appraisal, right? Then you get loan approval. Exactly right. Okay. Well, well, I mean, we we actually approve the loan before we have that. We can't go to closing, right? We know whether we're going to do the loan before we actually have the appraisal in here. Mm -hmm. We can't be guaranteed how much we're going to lend until we get it in here. But you're exactly right. Once we get the appraisal back in, then we you know recompute the numbers, make sure we're where we're at, and then we're going to lend. As a rule of thumb, we're going to lend up to eighty percent of the value of that appraisal. Right. If it's a, we, we will go to ninety percent, uh, but but we want to keep those to a loan amount around eight fifty nine hundred. Right. 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 Uh, those can't. But but the bigger stuff we'll need. And when you get real expensive house, we may want twenty five percent down mm -hmm. or twenty five percent equity in the home. It doesn't sure. necessarily have to be money out of their pocket. Sure. And that's one of the great things, especially in in markets like ours, where people have owned a home for several years. They may be able to to tear this home down, build a new one, and not actually need any money out of their pocket, it's amazing, John. Isn't it? Because we get to lend on that future value. Right. And if they already have this property that's worth quite a bit more than they paid for it seven or eight years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of times these people you don't need a lot of money out of your pocket mm -hmm. if you already own the property. That's nice. Yeah, so it makes yep. it easier. Yep. So when do you close? Because you have a limited amount of time uh -huh. to, to finish the house mm -hmm. right so what is the wh on your 15 year fixed product uh, -huh. uh what is the time allowed to build the home is it 18 months or 12 months we, we have 12 months okay and then we have a six month extension so we have 18 months and we also have 120 day lock period up front right which helps dramatically because for a lot of builders they can actually get me plans and specs and i can get an appraisal and i can get permits almost in mm -hmm. in 120 days right so the 120 day lock period so let's say i lock january 1st yeah i've got until the end of uh, uh april right until i have to actually go to closing till that borrower has to has to have any funding available so, right so that that helps a lot so in in the big scheme of things i actually have 12 plus 6 which is 18 months and then i got four more months during that lock period right so so i've got what 24 months to play with right 12, 6, 18, and 4. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 22 exactly. months. So yeah. Most most projects are, are done in less time than that. Uh, um, uh, the 22-month period is, is more than enough time. Right. So some people want to close their loan right away, and I always say, hold on a second. You know, mm -hmm. we, we from from the builder perspective, from Stanley mm -hmm. Martin perspective, we tell folks, close about 30 days before – we get the permit, yeah, we think right? right. Thirty permits. to forty-five days before we right. get the permit. Right. So, you know, and it takes it takes anywhere from four to six months to get the permit Damn. right now because right. of of just the delays in the construction industry. It's, it takes a little longer than it did a few years ago. So, you you should engage your lender early in the process. Absolutely. Talk, talk to Jerry. And you can lock your rate for 120 days, so mm -hmm. that's four months, mm -hmm. and that's about the time we want to close anyway. That's going to be about two months before 
uh, construction. Probably so. Then we've got 12 months to build the house. Mm -hmm. And generally, it's taking six to eight months, maybe uh -huh. 10 months to build right. the house. So yeah. as long as you don't close early, um, everything will work out fine. And yep. if there is some, you know, act of God situation that mm -hmm. comes up again that causes delays in construction, you have the ability to extend for, exactly. for six months. So what's entailed with the with the extension? Is there a, a, a cost? There, there is. It's a very low cost. So for a quarter of a point, we can extend that lock period for another six months. So it's okay. it's 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 very inexpensive if you need if you need to extend that lock period. Right. And since we don't have any points at all up front on our product, yeah. It's like you know, most most lenders do have an upfront point that they try to collect they call it a construction point right uh, um uh, but, but we don't have that so it's it's very very inexpensive right, right very attractive product good so is there anything that i'm not addressing with regard to timing and closing alone is there anything else you can add to this piece of the conversation today with with regard to getting your loan getting loan approval and and closing before construction the financing is the easy part, John. Mm -hmm. the, the financing is, is, is the easy part. The, 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 the work between you and the client, mm -hmm. um, figuring out what they're going to build and, and how to build that, that's the that's a tough part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, get your financing set up as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to encourage you to lock as soon as you can, knowing that I've got 120 days before I have to do anything. Right. Uh, and that 120 days and that 12 months, that's 16 months. And for most every project, the 16 month time is is more than right. more than enough time. So, right, right. Uh, but but the financing is is the easier part. It's yeah. a, it's it's very very important, and you want to make sure that before you spend a lot of John's time. Uh, uh, figuring out what you want in a house, you want mm -hmm. to make sure that you can actually do what you want to do because it's 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 not inexpensive in a lot of cases to start these projects. Yeah, you know, twenty percent on a two million dollar uh, project is four hundred thousand dollars, and not That's everybody's right. got four hundred thousand dollars laying in the bank. Right. A lot of times we have to show them how to do bridge loans. We have to show them how to mm -hmm. how to tap into the equity in the property that they're sooner or later going to liquidate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, to come up with that, that, uh, 20% up front. Mm -hmm. so, you know, it's so. interesting. You brought up, you know, spending time and, you know, mm -hmm. finding out if you can finance what you want to do. Right. The, the whole process of buying a house is a learning curve for the buyer sure, because they've never done this before. Right. And I think the buyer needs to learn a little bit about financing and what they, they can afford or not, not what they can afford, but what do they want to, to, to have in a, in a payment. Right. I think, Absolutely. Most most people qualify for a lot more than they want. <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They say, "Well, we got loan approval for one point <laughs> six million, but we don't want to go over one point two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants that? Who wants yeah. that nine thousand dollar a month payment when yeah. you start financing that much money? Yeah, but the more the more the more they learn, the easier it gets. So. Um, you know, we do a lot of new construction transactions, and not all those new construction transactions we get to talk to before they've before they've written that contract. And that's very eye opening when those people get in front of you and say, "Yeah, yeah, you can do this. You have to get rid of those two cars." <laughs> okay, which right? Is, which is that not a problem? But but uh, I mean, it's it's very common for someone to come come to us already have written a contract, not so much on the construction of perm because that, yeah. that that client's going to be coached a lot along the way. It's because it's not a simple trans, not right. as simple it, it, transaction. Well, there's a long lead time. It is. You know, most people that are living in their homes, they, they're not out buying a home tomorrow. I'm talking Absolutely. to them for six months or a year before yeah. they, yeah. Before they're ready. So yeah. I got lots of time But to when these people them. go out there and write these contracts with the with the site agent on new construction, yeah. it's not uncommon for them to come in and and start scratching their head and us telling, well, you know what? This is what you got to do. This is why. I mean, right. we don't make this stuff up. Yeah. If you want a good interest rate, you got to do this, this, and this. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Jerry Berry, thanks for coming in today. We're going to take a quick break. Okay. And, and we're going we're gonna to come back and continue the conversation. I got a story for you when we come back. Yeah. A horse story. A uh, horse story, yes. There we go. A lot of folks think that building a custom home is a complicated and arduous process. It doesn't have to be. At Stanley Martin Custom Homes, we have the process down to a science. We will bring you through the buying, design, and building phase one step at a time. Head on over to webuildonyourlot.com and check us out. Reach out to us if you want to get started on the path to your very own Stanley Martin Custom Home. 
All right, welcome back. We're still here with Jerry Berry. Thanks, Jerry, for coming in. Oh, no problem. No always, problem. Glad to be here. Always enjoy chatting with you. So so before you tell us your horror We're story— We're two old-timers, by the way. I know. We've both been at this way too long, right? Long time. <laughs> long time. But we're having fun. I agree. And we're I helping agree. people. We are. And that's yeah. the whole goal. Keeps you going, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It does. So so let's talk a little more about the construction loan. So uh-huh. when, when you close on your construction loan— Right. When do you have to start making payments, right? Because it's a line of credit. How does that work? So normally there's something that we pay off. There's normally the balance of the land or the balance of a house payment. Mm -hmm. So normally that's paid off at the time we go to settlement. Because before I can lend anything on your project, i got to be in first lien position. So I'm protected if something happens. I I have to be in first lien position. Yeah, and I'm really glad you brought that up. Right. Because every single week, I I have probably seven to ten meetings a week. Every single week, somebody tells me, oh, I've got this really great interest rate. I don't want to lose it. I'm just going to get another loan to pay for the construction. And I have to tell them it doesn't work like that. So talk a little more about that, right? You, right. So you, almost all these homes have, most, have a mortgage on them. Most all of them. And in your, your, your papers, you can't just tear that house down without notifying the bank because the house is collateral. Am I correct? Well, it's not that so much. Okay. It, it's, it's that... I am not protected if my new loan is not in first lien position. Gotcha. So if I'm in second lien position and something happens and this project doesn't happen, that other note gets paid off first. There's right. a, they're in first lien position. I'm just going to get what's left over. Gotcha. And that's probably not enough to, to, to pay what they owe me. Perfect. Makes so, perfect sense. Exactly. So, so they close on the loan right. and you pay off the existing mortgage right. or you pay for the land or whatever. And that becomes right. the initial balance on that line That's of credit. how much of that line of credit I've used. So okay. it's, it's simple interest during that phase. So you can figure it 300,000 times 0.0325. We're using three mm-hmm. and a quarter um, divided by 12. That's your monthly payment. Right. It's simple interest during this whole construction phase. Okay. Now, is it a monthly payment or a quarterly payment? It's a monthly interest payment. Okay. Monthly interest interest only. interest payment once you start using the line, once we've okay. used some of the line. It's interest only during the build-out phase. So every time the builder calls for a draw, mm-hmm. and you're, I think you said yours was seven Draws. Seven draws, yep. So every time the builder calls for a draw and we release money to him, we've used more of this line of credit. So we needed three hundred thousand dollars to pay off that first note what he owed on the house, right? Right. So now we just released another hundred thousand dollars. So now he's paying interest only on that four hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Again, simple interest, four hundred thousand times point oh three two five divided mm-hmm. by twelve. That's his monthly payment. Yep. It's very simple, nothing complicated. And then that'll just continue as the seven draws are done or as the six draws are done, right? Mm-hmm. So his his monthly payment's very, very low on the construction loan. On the front for, end. Yeah, for a couple of reasons. He's only used that much money, but also he probably has expenses someplace else. Mm-hmm. He's probably having to rent a rent a piece of property. So right. this actually helps them uh, during that during the build phase that their payments are very, very low. They have to take care of their, their their property taxes on their own during the build phase. Sure. And there's there's a, a, a builder's risk policy that they're required to get right. up front, but that's good for a year. So usually that's done up front, and they don't have to worry about their their insurance on the property. Yes. But even though the builder has insurance, the client has to go out and get a builder's risk policy. Right. right? And what that does for the client um, – obviously protects against the wind damage or something while they're building the property. But mm-hmm. also, if one of those employees or somebody walks on that property and gets hurt, mm-hmm. even though the builder's protected, that doesn't say that they can't come back and try to get something from the owner, too. Exactly. So every transaction, they're going to get a builder's risk policy right. up front, similar have, to just your homeowner's policy. Yeah, and we have... We have you have a, your own. We, yep. well, we have an agent that we work with. Oh, so good. Yeah, folks listening can't get builder's risk through their insurance company. Just reach out to us, and we can get them in touch with Ellen and... Uh, Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Not not every insurance person's done a construction or permit project. Right. And just like the closing, when you go to closing, not every closing company can do construction or perm closing properly. Understand all the draws. Understand right. all the the lien releases that has to happen to that. So it's important. Uh, uh, even though someone comes in and says, hey, I want to use X, Y, and Z, you know what? You really should use these guys or these guys. There's right. still options. There are. But yeah. you want you want you want to. To use somebody that knows about getting the lien releases mm-hmm. and knows what a mechanic's lien actually is yep. and those type of things versus someone that just does closings on, on the sale of a home. So yeah. that's real important. Yeah, and this, this is why I love having you in for a conversation because you, you hit on all the important things. You know, you're hitting on the builder's risk and you're hitting Good. on – 
the, the title company where you want to close. And I know we, we recommend that folks use First Excel Title, which is a Stanley Martin owned uh, title company because yeah. they know what they're doing. A construction loan is a different animal. It and you're, you're actually there's so many parts and pieces that are intertwined on this kind of a transaction because when we order the draw payments, we order them through the title company, mm -hmm. right? And the title company is the one that actually sends the appraiser out to do the bank, to do the inspection. We call it a bank inspection. Mm -hmm. And and uh, if the title company doesn't know how to manage that transaction, right. they, they, they could lose a week or two before they order the, the appraiser to go out and do the inspection. And we may not get our draw payment in time. And then we make a second draw payment, a request, sorry, draw request, mm -hmm. and a third draw request. If we don't have the first one yet, we stop construction. Sure. You know, so sure. there, there are a lot of important moving parts in this transaction, well, and you just hit on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a lender, too. I mean, there's not a lot of lenders out there that can do a construction perm project properly. Correct. I mean, they, they may say they can, but, but let them start working with a builder that, that, that has special, special requirements. It's not, it's not always easy. So no, it's, it's it's True. important. You guys guide them to, to lenders that you know can can right. do the project, can do the project properly, and so. give them the accurate information. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. Absolutely. So, what else is there? Anything else we should know about the uh, construction loans? I don't think you missed anything. But <sighs> once the home's one hundred percent complete, yep. At that time, the client can make some choices too. Okay. All right. So let's say let's say upfront we had you put two hundred thousand dollars down on this project. But in the meantime, you sold another piece of property. You got a hundred thousand dollar bonus for doing a good job, or whatever. Yeah. When it's time to start making a fully amortized payment, mm -hmm. right? Principal and interest payment. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, you can choose whether you want your your taxes included in your payment and your insurance included in your escrows. It's right. called. Uh, at that time, we're actually going to give that client an opportunity to change the amount they're financing. They can never go up higher than what we set it up for, so we're always going to set it up a little extra. Right. You don't pay anything on unless you use it. So go ahead, assuming the property will appraise, go ahead and set up your line for an extra $100,000 or $50,000, whatever. It gives you a buffer, especially in the hard times that we've seen recently with, right. with, with costs increasing so rapidly. It gives you a buffer. But also, you don't pay any more just because you set up the line for $800,000. I don't have a... Uh, uh, or set up for a million instead of eight hundred thousand. I don't mm -hmm. have a point. I'm not charging anything for that right. for that higher loan amount. And when it's time for the loan to go to permanent, I'm also going to give you some some time to to pay down the principal on the home if you mm -hmm. got some extra money you want into it. So even though I set it up for a million dollars, you may say, you know what, Jerry, I only want to finance seven fifty on this end loan. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fine. We modify the outstanding balance to seven fifty. Having you put in the money to do that, mm -hmm. and and then your your new payments are, are recast and calculated on the outstanding balance of the loan when it goes to permanent financing. Right, and that that works with the one time close as well. It works with the one time close as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Doesn't have to be a two time close to do that. We'll do that for you on the one time close. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So that makes it that makes it more powerful because a lot of people. Yeah, I want to put that. I want to put more into it, but I don't really want to put more money in it today. Right. What if something happens? What if something? You know, because you know, people always want to have some money left over. We, sure. we have to have reserves anyway. Absolutely. Um, so that that makes it easier on the client. Gives them a chance to once they figure out. Well, you know, this is really what I want my payment to be. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with this during the during the period but when it comes time to to the end. I'm case in point. I got a gentleman right now that finance on a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He's got a bonus schedule that he's guaranteed bonuses over the next couple of years. So he wants me to set up a bigger line for him, but he wants me when it comes time to go to the end loan to probably only use about 50% of the line that I've set up for him. Right. And I'm fine with that. Sure. I know up front, I'm going to set up the line for $3 million, but when it's time to go to permanent, he's going to have put all this other money into it Yeah. Uh, uh, prior to prior to going into the permanent loan. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah. everybody's got their own unique situation. Everybody's different. So call Jerry. Jerry JerryBerryLoans.com. Uh huh. That works. And, yep, exactly. JerryBerry Loans, L O A N S. <laughs> My parents didn't think I'd be real bright, so they gave me something easy to spell, right? <laughs> Just changed the first letters J E R R Y B E R R Y. Yeah. L O A N S dot com. Yeah. So reach out, reach out to Jerry. He's a great guy. I've been working with him for a long time. And, uh, he, you know, share your situation with him, and Jerry will uh, get you on the right path for sure. Cool. Yeah. So, the real reason you're here today. I know, I know. My mom's going to hate me. Yeah, we got to talk about 
the horror story. Yeah, I have a horror story for you. Jim. Let's hear it. Yeah. We're, we're talking about a horse, not a horror. It's no, a, a horse. It's a horse. It's a <laughs> horse. So I, I've been on the show before, and you know that I grew up in the Midwest, a little yep. town outside of Springfield, Missouri, a little, little dairy community. And so we had a gentleman farm. We always had a couple of pigs. We had a cow. We always mm -hmm. had a couple of calves on the cow. And, and we also had a couple of horses that we didn't really ride a lot. Yeah. So our hog, her name was Sally at the time. She, she, on occasion, would get out, and she'd get in the horse pasture, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, my, my dad was at the bowling alley, and mom was home, and, and Sally had got out, and she was running around the pasture, and the horses were chasing the pig. And the horses could trample a pig. They probably wouldn't, but they could, right? right? And they could kill a pig, but they probably wouldn't. Right. Uh, uh, so mom calls dad, and, and dad says, well, go get the pig and put it back away. I'll yeah. fix the fence tomorrow. <laughs> so mom goes out and... Walks out there, quarter of a mile right, gets the pig, puts the pig back in the pen, right. goes back in the house. 30 minutes later, the pig's back out. <laughs> so so mom, calls, mom calls Carl Jean, said, Carl Jean, that damn pig's out again. What am I supposed to do? Right. And uh, he says, well, go get the pig back in and put a piece of wood there. I'm not going to do that. You come home. I can't come home. I'm, I'm running the bowling alley. <sighs> what am I going to do? He says, well, go get the shotgun. All right, and and it's got bird shot in it. Shoot that horse in the butt, because mom grew up on a farm. <laughs> Shoot that horse in the butt. He'll run up and he won't come back down the rest of the day, and all and the pig will be fine. You can let the pig roam around. Right. So so <laughs> so mom, you know, all we had was a big old double barrel break action shotgun, right? right. I mean, it was my grandpa's grandpa. The thing was was old as Bethus, and it, it wasn't fun to shoot, and it didn't have a pad, and it hurt. Oh. So mom says, well, I'm not going to shoot that, that horse with the, with the shotgun. I'm going to use 22. <laughs> no. Okay. So, so, so she gets our little 22 out, and she shoots that horse. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it's my sister's horse. She's about the only one that could ride things. The thing was mean. His name was Rebel, and he was mean. So, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so she shoots that, she shoots that horse. She calls Carl Jean. She says, Carl Jean shot the horse. About that time, Tammy or Janice came home and, and she's all up in arms. Mom shot the horse and, and she's calling the vet. <laughs> so <laughs> the vet came out, the vet came out and, and you could feel the bullet. Mom just barely hit the horse. The bullet, bullet was down his belly button right. basically and you could fill the bullet there and the the vet said ah, that's not gonna hurt anything but i'll give the i'll give the horse a shot so the doc <laughs> the doc gives the horse a shot and gives him like 20 cc's of streptomycin the horse has a heart attack and dies oh <laughs> we get up the next morning the horse is laying over oh. uh, dead had a heart it wasn't the bullet the bullet you right. can full you can see the bullet but the uh, uh the veterinarian didn't quite know what to give the uh horse so we always oh. give my mother a hard time that she shot a horse and killed it oh my goodness yeah. so it is a, a horror story. story it's a horse story yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh what year story. was that? that was a long time ago I'm going to go with 72. Yeah. 72, that's, that's 73. Been a little while. 72, 73. Yeah, and that yeah. story has survived all these decades. <laughs> Mom finds out I told that story. She'll be mad at me. Yeah. She... <laughs> I'm not going to tell her. <laughs> I'm not going to tell her. She'll have to find it. She's probably not listening to this anyway. I don't think so. Yeah. Moral of the story, just don't let Mom hang around your horses. Yeah, no problem. We give her a hard time. <laughs> All right, Jerry, Jerry Berry, thanks so much for coming in. We always love seeing you, and uh, we appreciate your intelligence that you have on the uh, construction financing. So uh, this is a, another episode of the Go With John Show. Go out there and build something extraordinary. Thanks, John.